Thank you, worship team. But you know how I am, so I might call on you. Well, I, this is a treat for me. A pastor has asked me to preach. Um, I want to just say hi to a few people. Good friends of ours, the Millers are here. Christine and Jeff, would you stand up, please? I want you all to say hi to them after the service. They're great Christians, great lovers of Jesus, and great friends of ours. Uh, the world has their Dr. Oz. We have our own Dr. Oz, Rick Birch. Are you here, Rick? Stand up, Mr. Oz. There you are. Uh, Rick is the creator of the Oz Park, if you didn't know that. So be praying for Rick and the uh, vision that God has given him so it will come to pass. Anybody else I'm missing? Paula and Jazzy, are you here? Where are you? There you these are friends of ours. Just stand up. I want everybody to see you. And they've come out. All right. You will all get your $10 after the service. Uh, I'll, I can't do it now. Because... Well... Hallelujah. You know, laughter is good for you. It's actually biblical. And it says it releases endorphins, uh, takes care of the bad Pac-Man in your body, releases uh, endorphins. Now, medically, that's been proven. And so they have the patients laughing more before and after a surgery, and they say healing comes faster. So our God has told us that three, two, 3,000 years ago. We're just catching up a little bit and understanding the medical field is that that's the truth. God is so good. I have a, sp a special word today. I think it's a prophetic word. It's, it's going to open our eyes a little bit as to the truth. Uh, it's found, and I want to read in Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. But first, before I do that, I want to tell you a little story. It's called Acting Up in Church. For all the children and their parents that are younger, this is for you. One Sunday in a Midwest city, a young child was acting up during the morning worship hour. Parents did their best to maintain some sense of order in the pew, but were losing the battle. Honey, was this written by any of our children, by the way? Because this could. <laughs> Finally, the father picked the little fellow up and walked sternly up the aisle on his way out. Just before reaching the safety of the foyer, the little one called loudly to, loudly to the congregation, Please pray for me, pray for me. <laughs> okay. That's just my sense of humor, isn't it? Well, maybe this one will be better. I don't know why I pulled two of them out, because that was a short one. Kindergarten teacher gave her class a show-and-tell assignment of bringing something to represent their religion. The first boy got in the front of the class and said, My name is Benjamin. I'm Jewish, and this is the Star of David. Well, the second boy got in front of the class and said, My name is Mary. I'm Catholic, and this is my crucifix. Third boy got in front of the class and said, My name is Tommy. I'm a Baptist, and this is my casserole. What's the matter? I got a lot of Baptists here, don't I? Uh-huh. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Isaiah 61, 60, verse 1 says, Arise, shine. This is like, I've told you time and time again, each time I preach it comes greater and greater to me. It's like reading the, the newspaper, up to date, moment by moment, right now. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Get up, the, the Holy Spirit saying. Come up for where, you're, where you've been down. Come on up. Shine. Let the Holy Spirit shine upon you. I'm going to give you a great in-depth revelation. You ready for this? You'll never hear this anywhere else. Christianity is not about you. Oh, my God. It's about others. Did you know that? So whenever you're praying, whenever you're uh, with people, you can always locate yourself. If you always talk about yourself, it's all about you. If even in prayer, all you're thinking about is your problems, it's all about you, isn't it? But it's not about you. It's about Jesus. It's about others. He's given us an anointing, and this anointing can break yokes of bondage over our own lives and over other people's lives. We have to be conscious of this. This is being told to us prophetically. For this is the season and the time for it, is it not? This is a very precarious moment in the history of our world. If you do not see that now, you are blinded in, uh, amongst most people that are blinded because we are in a time of transitioning. 
The church is in a time of, of coming either forward or heading backward. This is a time of either quitting or moving forward like you never moved before. Are you feeling this pressure that I'm talking about? Are you sensing that the enemy's coming out with guns blazing, trying to destroy your faith in Jesus Christ? That's his main goal. But we have to stand up strong. We have been anointed. Your light, the light, who's known as the light? It's Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. He's come. He has not only come, he's in you. He says, if you've received me as your Savior and Lord, and you've repented of your ways, and you've asked me to come in and receive eternal life, I'm in you, and I'm never going to leave you nor forsake you. Once you meditate on that moment and that thought, the anointing, the shining, the, the deliverance power of God begins to manifest and begins to heal your mortal body. Your mortal body takes commands from your spirit man. Your spirit man needs to be built up in the Lord. You need to hear the word of God. You need to come to church. Did you know that? Something, listen, church is not man's idea. It's the Holy Spirit's idea. Now, granted, I could tell you the truth that church is not made up of brick and mortar. It's not about to the, coming to a building. We are the church, the Bible says. So you have to stand up and understand everywhere you go, you're, you're the carrier of Jesus Christ and his benefits that he has accomplished for all humanity. You're only here breathing for a purpose. There's a purpose in your life, and you just have to yield to the Lord each day. And the devil will attempt to try to steal, kill, or destroy your walk with Jesus. He wants to steal from generations to come. He hates the name of Jesus. Do you understand? All the chaos in the world today is not anything to do with government or anything else, Republican or Democrat, it has to do with Christianity. Do you not see that? They're attempting to come after Jesus Christ. The devil is a liar, and we're not fighting flesh and blood. We are fighting powers and principalities and rulers of the darkness of this world. The beautiful part about it is they have lost their power, and you have to shine and know that. You have to know and understand who you are, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So the newspaper reads to you today, Arise, shine, your light has already come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Increased anointing is happening right now in this generation, right now to you as you're hearing my voice. All you got to do is yield to the Holy Spirit and say, Yes, Jesus, and no to sickness and disease, and no to what the enemy's throwing against you. You have to be able to gather it in your heart, not in your mind. Renew your mind, the Bible says. The mind wants to perform flesh. The mind wants what it wants, but you have to put your spirit together with Christ and read the Bible. The Bible is spirit food. It'll feed you every tape you listen to. You know, yesterday I was sitting with my son, and my son asked me, he's in his 40s, Dad, tell me how you hear from God. Oh, that's a great question. We ought to be asking more of that of, of Christians in general. And I was delighted to tell him, son, it takes time to spend time with somebody to know somebody. Did you know that? You don't get to know your wife unless you spend time with her. And then when she says something, even before she says it, you're anticipating it. I could tell you exactly after 48 years, 47 years of being married to my wife, I can tell you right now, right now what she's thinking. See, it's just become, we become one. And so I said, son, the best thing you could do is read the Bible. The Bible is spirit food. It is the thoughts of God pen to paper. And I said, son, the Bible is alive. It's not a dead book. It's a book of revelation. It's not a book of condemnation or a book of judgmentalness or criticalness. Whenever you see that, son, you're not seeing God. Do you understand that, Christians? You better listen to that because there's, there's coming a moment in time right now where the enemy's attempting to cause us to hate people, to hate other people other religions and to hate things. We do not hate, we love. We don't love what people are doing, but we love them in Christ. Do you understand that? Don't be rude. That's not a giving of the Holy Spirit. Don't be uh, you know, mean to people, mean-spirited. That's the spirit of your flesh doing those kinds of things. But think about others in this generation. You have to win them to the Lord. And the only way this generation will come, listen to me, they have to see a demonstration of the love of God through you. 
This generation is done with sermons. They're done with everything else. They want the power of God on display. You preached it. You, you, you're dem- now it's time every one of us demonstrate it. You know, Pastor Sandy goes out into the streets. But we all, on, we're, we all have our streets and, and your jobs and wherever you are. You have to be able to know, understand when you walk into that job, you're not just going there for the finances and the money. God's your source. He'll provide for you. It doesn't matter if you go to the job or don't go to the job. He provides. He's your provider. So consequently, when you go in, you're on assignment. God has assigned you to be around certain people. There's somebody that you're working with. There's somebody around you that's hurting desperately. They're de- so desperate, they are, they are ready to commit suicide. Do you understand? And you just happen to be there at that moment. Stop getting involved in the gossip and everything else because that's not what you're made for or equipped for. You're made to be the the container of light. And let me tell you, if you're walking with Jesus, they recognize the light in you. There will come a time when all hell will break loose in their lives and they will remember you. You will get a phone call. Believe me, they will search you out. Because they remembered you gave them Jesus. They, rem- you, they remembered there was a way out and you were trying to show them. They'll call you. They see the truth. People of this world are born with a light. That light is the light of Christ. They want to worship something. They know God is alive. They've just never seen him. And they desire to see him. So my question to you now is in these end times, there is a light and an and arising There is an anointing arising upon you. Wherever you go, you have to now take your authority. You have to now know who you are in Christ. You have to now lay hands on the sick and see them recover. But you don't understand. It'll be foolish, and I've never seen healings. The reason why the church is void of power is because we've stopped doing these very things. We've been ashamed and being being afraid But the truth of the matter is the Holy Spirit's crying out today, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Cast out devils. Don't you believe it? That's been, you know what's entered the church? That's what's happening, what's happened to all of us. We've become, can I say this word? People don't like, we've become liberal. I mean, even in our theology, we've become liberal. We, we, we don't see any power, so we've gone the opposite way, and we succumb in conformity to mostly everything. We ought not to be in conformity to the things of the world. We ought to be in conformity to Christ and be able to understand the power of his resurrection, the fellowship with his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. So this newspaper goes on to read, See, congregation, darkness covers the earth. Thick darkness is over the people's. But the Lord rises upon you, and the glory of the Lord appears over you. Nations will come. Now listen, God is prophesying. He's not after destroying America. Stop thinking he's out to destroy us. That is a destructive thought. Destructive thoughts come from? That's right. You have to learn to discern thoughts. Do you understand? You're going to get about 8,000 thoughts during the course of a day flying through your carnal thinking. So you're going to have to take, make sure you spend time with Jesus. Yeah. Make sure you spend time with Jesus because that's the only way you're going to discern this. I'm going to give you an example before I continue about Jesus. Let me tell you what happened. While he walked with the disciples, there was one question they kept asking him, but no other question. This, I couldn't get it in my mind. Why are they asking Jesus this one question? And the one question they asked was, Show us how to pray. Tell us, how, how do we pray? Now, I often question, why did they ask that question? They could have asked, how do you do the healing? How do you do this? How do you do that? No, show us prayer. Because what happened is, the Bible says, early in the morning, before sunrise, Jesus got up, went into the hillsides, and prayed to his Father. And when he came down into the cities... Healing and deliverance and devils and demons came out of people. So they, after a time, they said, boom, a light went off in the disciples. Something's different about him. And he gets it while he's up there. Saints, 
you got to get your marching orders when you're up there with Jesus. And when you're down here upon this earth, submitting to the lordship of Jesus Christ through his word, whatever his word says, yes, sir, I'm here. You're the commander in chief. Whatever you so see fit, I'll take care of it for you. You're here to be able to present to the sick and dying world the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. So you're going to have to spend time. Now, I'm not advocating, this is another thing that's gone away in the church. I'm not advocating you spend two, three hours in the morning right away. You're going to have to build up. It's, it's like anything else. You have to train yourself in the physical. A physical exercise profit is little, but you'll have to train yourself in the spiritual realm as well. You'll have to begin to set aside 10, 15 minutes each day before you go about your day in the beginning and start to um, spend time with God. Now, listen to me, please. We're in warfare, and we have to understand some things while we're in warfare. That's why we gather in, in church. We're here, here to get our marching orders. We're here to be built up so we can go back out into the battlefield and know what God is saying to us. You're going to have to learn about the gifts of the Spirit. You're going to have to learn praying about baptism in the Holy Spirit. You're not going to any more struggle with this stuff. This stuff the enemy has fought tooth and nail. These are the very things that bring us into the presence of God. The baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is part of the gospel. If we don't like it, then we have to rip it out. You can't rip that out of the scripture. You'd be ripping almost the whole book of Acts. Do you understand the whole book of Acts? When the Spirit came upon them, they began to speak in other tongues. They spoke in other tongues. And the Bible says, ask the Holy Spirit to baptize you, and he'll baptize you with his spirit, and the evidence will be the speaking in tongues. By every illustration, you'll know that. So in the mornings, you're going to have to... Why? Because the Bible says you'll be building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, and you need to build yourself up. You've got a war going on. You've got to be able to discern. I know you're feeling the effects of this war. It's touching your heart. Your heart is saying, and some of you may even be here at the church for the first time in a long time, your heart is saying, I need to get back. I need to get back to Christ. That's the warfare. That's the Holy Ghost ministering to you and saying, don't go any further. Because the further you go back, the further you go back, you start turning around and going this way. And you're not equipped. You don't have armor for your back. You understand that? The only armor you have is for the front. You have to move forward. If you don't move forward, you will be a casualty. Do you understand? You'll be a casualty. And here's what I want you to think, moms and dads. Please listen to me. This is a very needed message. Your casualties will be concentrated then to your children and your children's children. You have to fight. Men of the household, you have to fight. You have to fight the good fight of faith. You have to pray. You have to pray in tongues. You have to praise. You're going to have to lift your hands. You're going to have to overcome all the obstacles of shame and whatever else. And you're going to have to know you're in warfare for your wife and your children and your grandchildren for many generations to come. Yeah, it's the truth. Now, while the Lord arises upon you in favors, I'm telling you, there's, the church is in for a favor move. You're going to see things, oh, that are going to blow your mind. And if you don't know Jesus, you're going to think, oh, my God, I can't keep up with this. But when you know Jesus, you're going to do what verse uh, five, 3 says. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes. And look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar. I'm telling you, this new generation, they're waiting. They're waiting with bated breath and hearts open to say, Jesus, reveal yourself to us if you're real. And you, my friends, are here living on this earth and breathing for that very purpose. Someone in your vicinity, somebody's waiting, somebody's in want. To hear the message of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, turn over with me to 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles chapter 14. I'll give you an illustration of this as it works. And I'll give you some practical things before we close. You know I don't preach long, so stay with me a little bit. 1 Chronicles chapter 14 now King Hiram of Tyre sent messengers to David. 
along with cedar logs, stone masons, carpenters, to build a palace for him. And David knew, circle the word knew, and David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel, that his kingdom had been highly exalted for the sake of his people Israel. Stop, point one. David knew. Do you know your God? Do you understand he's the God of the breakthrough? Do you understand he wants to break through for you? Do you understand David killed the lion and the bear and he killed Goliath? But do you know you have your lions and your bears and your Goliaths to conquer as well? Do you understand you have to know he's the God of the breakthrough? Yes. All right, well, turn to, to the person to your left and tell them, do you know the God of the breakthrough? Jesus. Turn to the, and just tell them this. Say, God is about to break through for you. Turn to the other side to say, do you know the God of the breakthrough? Amen. Tell him God is about to break through for you. Amen. And this is how David knew. He spent time with God. He saw him in action. Do you actually think a young teenage boy who come up against a, a, a giant of 9 foot 7 inches tall, 489 pounds, do you actually think plus armor. Do you actually think when he looked at this man, he was just all faith? He was just all, come on, give me a little. I'll give you to you. He had to muster up what was in his spirit. He had spent time with God. Do you understand? He knew his father. He knew his father would not take that. He knew his father was a covenant God. He knew that his father equipped him for battle. He knew that uh, uh, invested within him was the authority to come against this uncircumcised Philistine and say, who are you today? Your head will be fed to the birds as this boy is quaking. Listen, have you ever been there? Yes. I've been there. I've been to that place where the doctors give you an evil report. I've been to that place where I've wilted and my mind has said, oh my God, no, this is the end. And my spirit man says, no, no, it's not. And then I just turned one time and I said to them, to when they gave the evil report, and I said, no. Do you understand that word, no? And he looked at me and he said, no. I said, that's right, no. I didn't even know what I was doing. Why did I do that? It was in my spirit. Because you have to be ready. You got to be ready for evil reports. You got to be ready for the enemy trying to kill, steal, and destroy. And you're ready and equipped with the word of God when it's placed in your heart by knowing that he's given you all authority and power to tread on scorpions and serpents. Over the enemy, all power has been given to you. He, the devil, is under your feet. You've got to be conscious of this as a warrior. You have to be equipped with the, to battle, not moving backward, but moving forward. But you say, well, what if it doesn't happen? Listen, just shut. Can I say this? And I don't mean to hurt your feelings. Shut up. That's enough. We've been battling for 66,000. How many years have been Christians been battling? I know we've lost some things. I know we've, we've lost a few battles. But that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean we just wilt and quit and, uh, and start crying. And that's it. We become mamby pamby Christians. We become snowflakes. So you have to be careful of what you're talking about. You got to understand. You know something we don't understand? It, it, if, if you're going through something, somebody else in this world is going through it with you. And they're going through it worse. <laughs> they're living in a nation that they have to go to church underground to hear what you're hearing. They're in a nation that's torturing them for hearing the very words you're getting. And, and so nonchalantly many times as Christians we're receiving. They're going to death for it. Ah, we're in the battle and we've got the victory. See, once the devil knows that you're submitting to God by reading the Bible, and by placing his authority of the word before you, he knows he has to flee from you. But what's happening is we've been submitting to the devil, and God's been fleeing from us. Whoa, let that sink in for a minute. We've been submitting to the devil. We've been getting bad reports. We've been giving everything, and we're fighting this in the flesh. Don't you fight a spiritual battle by the flesh. You're not going to fight this by flesh, by positive thinking or by doing something that's nice or, or anything else. You're going to fight this by spiritual battle. You know, you're not going to, you know, eat, you know, yes, sir, that's right. Eating good foods is good. It's good to eat good foods. 
It's good to put good things into your mortal bodies. But that's not going to bring your healing to the point of sometimes that something tries to overwhelm you. You've got to know God is the healer. You've got to know that Jesus Christ came to set the captive free. You've got to know these things. I mean, those things are good for a moment, for a purpose. How I got on the topic of dieting, I'll never know. <laughs> All I can tell you is I forgot to eat breakfast this morning. <laughs> for the sake of the people of Israel, David knew this. What else I got? Gospel without power is no gospel at all. God of the breakthrough. Jesus came down from the wilderness. How did the devil tempt him? He said, if you are the son of God. If, if, if. What are you talking about, devil? If. This all shows how stupid he is. He didn't even know Jesus was the son of God. What do you mean if? That goes to show you he doesn't understand anything unless you tell him. He doesn't know you're discouraged unless you tell him. That's why the Bible's pretty explicit. When you're weak, be strong. Why? The enemy is a roaring. He's looking about anybody whom he may devour, especially those who resist that fast in the faith. He's waiting for that word to come out. I'm exhausted. Ba-bam! That's right, you are. And he'll cause your mortal body to be weakened. Come on! This is warfare. These are warfare terms. We fight the good fight of faith. I got my new glasses. I can't see the time. Thank you. All right. When the Philistines, go down to verse 8. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all of Israel, they went up in full force. Oh, here. Sure, he's going to come up in full force. When, <laughs> he didn't know David was going to be the king. The devil didn't know it. Come on. He obviously didn't. You want to know why? Because it was a lapse from 16 years old to about 30 when David, David became the king. And in that interim time, David was being attacked by Saul. He was had all kinds of problems with his family. His own kids were giving him trouble. Everything was breaking. Hell broke loose for David. And isn't it ironic when David was just about to take the kingship, just about to take his position of rightful authority, here comes the devil. And he tries to steal, kill, and destroy. So if you're going through something right now, do you understand the enemy is the one is attempting to stop the flow of God in your life, to stop the blessing of God. you got to know that. That's the gospel truth. And listen to what David said. He said, but David heard about it, and he went out to meet him. He went out to meet him. Do you see what the Holy Spirit's saying? Don't wait for the devil to attack you. You go out and meet him head to head with the word of God. And you quote that word and you tell him, you shall get thee behind me, Satan. You shall not have my children, my grandchildren. You will not inflict generic diseases, general diseases of the past. Nothing, nothing, nothing shall be uh, able to afflict the people of God. Do you understand? As long as your God's anointed, he's taking care of you. And when you're vocalizing it, the Holy Ghost comes on the scene and does the warfare for you. The battle, it's not by might, not by power, but by his spirit, says the Lord. The spirit of God welling up within you when you release the Holy Spirit by the spoken word of God. The battle is now the sword goes out and does the battle for you. Battle is the Lord's. It's already won the victory. Give him glory. Don't hold back. Move forward. Don't be afraid of tongues. Don't be afraid of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid of praising. Come on. We got to come to church. Listen, I know your mind is saying, oh, I got to go to church one more time. We all go through this. Even the, hello, are pastors listening? Even, even pastors don't want to come to church sometimes. You've heard the, the truth about a, a young man saying to his mother, Mom, I don't want to go to church today at all. She says, you have to. You're the pastor. That's why we got a strong woman of God at the helm. I understand she's not no wimpy wimp out. There's pa- no, you'd say there's pastors right now that are wimping out. They're conforming to the ways of the world. You've got to be kidding me. They're putting liberalism into the church. No way. No way. No way. We stand strong. 
You know, years ago, we were involved in a local church that was growing tremendously, two, three, four hundred people. And one truth we found out about the situation that developed, what happened is the church ended up folding up, nothing came good out of it. Everybody was ransacked by the enemy very badly. Well, one thing we did find out, including ourselves, one thing we did find out was that God said a, asked us a question when it was all done. He said, did you pray for them? Well, you, you, uh, yeah. Lord, don't you understand? They were doing wrong, don't you? I, he says, I didn't ask you that. He said, those are my children. He says, I'll take care of them. Did you and were you praying for them? And you know what my wife and I had to say? No, we weren't. Then he said, I do not charge them with the loss. I charge you with the loss. Saints of God, you have a lot of power. And when two of you agree is touching anything, if you will pray for your pastor and pray for your church, you're going to get a mighty move of God's Holy Spirit amongst you. You want that in your own life? Pray for your leadership. Pray for those in authority over you. Do you understand the principle? But you don't understand. Shut up. Wendy does not like that word. But I'm telling the devil to shut up. Not everybody else. Come on. Ought to be a song like that. Run, devil, run. I'm coming after you. Come on, she's filled with the Holy Ghost. You gotta move again. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, they went up in full force. Now the Philistines had come and raided the valley of Rephraim. So David inquired of God, Shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord answered him, Go. I couldn't, I bet you God couldn't wait to say that to him. Go. Oh, David, go. Go. I know he was thinking, Go, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. And all the heaven cheering him on. Do you know something about it? Listen to me. Are you, you've got to know this. We are on the battlefield. And do you know heaven sees us? Oh, you've got to know that. In the presence of the angels, when one person repents, all of the angels know it. And if the angels know it, so does heaven. Do you understand? They know one person that comes into the kingdom. They know if you've come in. They know your name. They know, and they are cheering you on. They're saying, go, 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 go. Don't give up. Go. That's your family members. Those are people that have gone on before you. Those are people that held the faith. They held the line. Don't give up now. Where are you going? And he told, that's what the apostle said, where can I go, Lord? Right. You're the only person that has eternal life. Where, what do I do? He said, shape up. That's what you can do. Could you not tarry one hour with me? And they fell asleep. But he loved them anyway. He, he loved them through it. And he loves you. But he's equipping you because you are the end time battle messengers. You are the people that are equipped by the Holy Spirit. Go. So David and his men went up to Baal Perazan and there he defeated them. He said, As the waters break out, God has broken out against my enemies by my hand. By my hand. So that the place was called Baal Perazan, which means the Lord of the breakthrough. By my hand, David said. In other words, what the Holy Spirit's telling you and I is, you have. You have an authority God has given you to work as co-laborers with God. You co-labor with him. You speak the word of the Lord, he takes care of this, the situation. Do you understand you've got to do that every single day of your life? Put the sword of the Spirit in your hand. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Put on the helmet of salvation. Give, to take the sword of the Spirit. And pray with all types of prayer. Just pray and believe God for the warfare is amongst you and you have the victory. Now, what you're going to be seeing in the near future is you're going to see people being healed. Left, right, and center. Could be some of your own relatives. But it's not going to happen without you. God's not going to take his church. See, the church, he's coming back for a church without spot nor wrinkle. So, 
If he's coming back for a church without spot and a wrinkle, God help us, we ain't here. I don't think we're halfway there yet. But when we start to get these principles together and we come in on Sundays and we are shundai, rundai, tie my bow ties during the course of the week and we are ready, what are we ready for? I can't wait to be blessed. No, you're not coming in waiting to be blessed. You're already blessed. You're coming in looking for someone to bless. Who can I bless for the Lord? How can I demonstrate your kingdom? When we get in unity of heart, soul, mind, and strength, all hell is going to be defeated. What can now stand against you? Nothing, says the Lord. I'm about to break through. I'm the God of the breakthrough. Turn to somebody and say, he's the God of the breakthrough. Tell him he's going to break through for you. Mm. I got two minutes, and this is what I'll give you. Last and final thing, of course, is don't give up. I wrote a few things out here. So discouragement is often the greatest when breakthrough is the closest. We know that now. When you feel the weakest, God's grace will be the strongest. You're going to have to know that. Many of us that are older than the Lord can instruct you on that. When you are the, feel the weakest, God's grace will be the strongest. The emotional exhaustion you feel, and ah, somebody needs to hear this, isn't a sign that God's not with you. It's evidence that you are about to enter into a long-awaited promise and purpose from God. You're about to enter in. So that exhaustion, you've done nothing wrong. You fought the good fight of faith. Now just rest in him and know that that long-awaited purpose is from him and he's bringing it to pass. Three things that will position you for a turnover. Here they are. Number one, stop listening to the lies of the devil. Stop listening. For him saying, this won't happen. It won't happen. He will, and his MO was always to point, uh, to paint an impossible situation where there is no getting out of. He loves, but, 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 but God. See, Paul kept saying this, but God. God is the God of the impossible. Do you understand? He loves, he loves, he loves impossible situations to make them possible. Oh, come, listen to me. In the beginning of the books of Genesis, there was darkness that covered the earth, and gross darkness. And you know what God said? I don't like darkness. Let there be light. Light be. In your situations, he doesn't like darkness to come upon you just to teach you a lesson. He's not going to teach you a lesson through darkness. He's not going to let the devil do that. He'll teach you lessons through his word and his love and his mercy and grace. And he said, let there be light. So he's talking to you today. I love impossible situations. Bring them to me and see the impossible being taken care of. Well, uh, watch your words. Number two, pastor's preaching this uh, in her faith ministry now that she's talking to us each week. She's talking about faith. And boy, you don't want to miss those. I mean, she's, her and I grew up in the camp, the camp of faith and same camps. And, and you know, there's various camps in, in Christianity that people come from. Um, we happen to come from... Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland, situations like that. They were our fathers and, and mothers in the faith. And you're missing out on great messages of faith when you're listening to your pastor. She's preaching them really solid. And so um, watch your words. She's talking about death and life are in the power of the tongue. Get control of your tongue, you get control of your life. Get control of your tongue, you'll get control of your life. But you don't understand what I see. Stop. Don't look with your carnal, natural eyes. Look by the eyes of the spirit. You have two sets of eyes, spiritual and physical. You have two sets of ears, spiritual and physical. There's a certain sound of heaven. You have to get to learn to know the sound of heaven. The sound of heaven is victory. The sound of heaven is not condemnation or criticalness or judgmentalness. It is victory, victory, victory. It's why I love, uh, Somalix does that for me. I, I love victory songs. I, I just, I thrive on them. I can't wait to, victory is mine. See, I'm confessing it. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. God told Satan, get behind me. Victory today is mine. Oh, peace is mine. Now, see, you're confessing as you're enjoying the presence of the Lord. And as you're doing that, the presence of the Lord comes onto the scene for where his spirit is, and you begin to praise him. He inhabits his praises, he says. So as we come victorious, and he loves to see his kids victorious, 
He loves to see us on top of things, not on the bottom. We're the head, he said. We're not the tail. We're above, and we're not beneath. No, we're not. Yeah, but you don't understand what these pre people are doing, what they're doing. I don't care about that area. I'll pray for them. I don't need to know what they're doing. All I know is they are children of the living God. They're my son. They're God's sons and daughters, and they're my brothers and sisters. End of conversation. I'm not going to air my dirty laundry to people of the world to tell them about you. If I do that, guess what happens to me? You touch God's anointed, and you may not like God's anointed or what they've done, but if you touch God's anointed, that thing will come right back on you, and you will sow and you will reap. Do you understand sowing and reaping in the kingdom is so valid? I'm going to stay on the sowing and reaping of, of non-criticalness, non-judgmentalness, of mercy, because I want that stuff to come back to me. And that's how you'll win people to Christ. The Holy Spirit will convict them. You don't need to be the junior Holy Spirit. Do you understand that? Some parents need to hear that. You are not the junior Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has his ways and things and understanding of each person's individual heart. That as long as you train them up in the way they should go when they are young, they will not depart from it. Trust that. Rest in God. Now what do you do? Confess. But you don't see how they're walking. They're not walking right. Confess how they walk right. How do you see them? How do you want to see them? I want to see them whole and filled with the Holy Ghost. Then see it. Then envision it. Speak it. Don't get over into the other area confessing what's wrong with them. Do you understand the kingdom now? kingdom of God is confessing. Call those things that are not as though they were. Oh, you say, what if they don't work? It's not up to me to make them work. That takes the onus off of us. It's not up to me. It's up to God. It's up to his glory. We don't, look it. I think what happens with Christians is we, we don't have to, like, defend God. He can defend himself. It's up to him to get glory and honor when we do the things that we're told he's telling us to do. We don't have to defend him. He's big enough that he can take care of himself. Stand up with me, please. Last and final point is be consistent, stay focused, be determined that quitting is not an option. Quitting is not an option. Quit, quitting is not an option. Take it out of your vocabulary and take it out of your heart. You've been anointed. But you don't understand what I'm going through. I don't, but God does. Don't worry. He loves you. He'll see you through. If you're addicted to drugs in any particular way, he's the lifter of burdens. He's the yoke-destroying burden lifter. He'll take your addictions and throw them as far as the east is from the west. Do you understand? He wants you free as well. Now every time you need to get up and you need to say that. You need to tell the Lord who you are. You need to tell the devil who you are and be consistent. And don't confess your failure. Don't confess your insecurities and your weaknesses. Because the more you go down that path, the more you'll get discouraged and depressed. Raise your hands, please. Where's Vince? Vince, you got a guitar? Are you up here yet, Vince? Hello, Vince. Not here yet? Come on, Vinny. Thanks, Vince. Everybody say, thank you, Vince. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> Just play me something. Well, the Holy Ghost is moving here right this moment. Don't be afraid of silence either. Sometimes the church is, thinks they got to fill in the silence. He, God can take care of that. So we're going to take five minutes. Yeah, it's, it's still only 1145. All right, all right, all right. 1146. All right, now God's going to minister to you. Science following. I, I said that's what the word says, so I'm going to have to believe for it. Raise your hands. <laughs>